Hello there, all my brothers and sisters in Christ in many different places. Let's start off this time together with uh, a praise to the Lord. And uh, how I encourage people to praise the Lord is to uh, speak a complete thought and sentences. So, uh, you know, in our Pentecostal circles, we often get caught up in uh, the hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory, hallelujah. Uh, and there's nothing wrong in that in itself, but I think it's more meaningful to us to speak in complete thought and sentences. So let's do three of them. And if you're so new that you don't even necessarily even know the Lord, don't even know what I'm talking about, uh, well, well, I'm going to praise the Lord out loud, and all of you out there, praise the Lord. Uh, but if you don't know how to do that, just go ditto, I agree with that guy. And, uh, and we'll just get along fine. The Lord will listen to you. Lord, we just give you thanks and praise for this glorious day that you have made for us. We thank you that you care about us, that you have created for us this glorious future that is beyond our wildest imagination. Lord, that you cared about us so much that before the foundation of the world, you had a plan for our life and that we are not just bumbling through life, but we are walking out of your plan. So Lord, I thank you for that. And if we don't know how to do that, Lord, before this day is over, may we start to know how to do that. And we give you thanks for that. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I also want to speak to those of you who need prayer in your body. Uh, we believe in divine healing, uh, but we also believe that uh, the church has spent so much time asking God to heal people when Jesus didn't say that. He said that you speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed. Uh, so, Lord, we do that. We, we speak to that mountain. Whatever that mountain is in your life, you speak to it. And you say, well, I don't know if I, I can do that. Well, the Lord says you can. And who are you going to believe? The Lord says you can, you can. So we just need to learn how to speak with authority in the name of Jesus. So I want you to just lay hands on your body. Uh, and if you're struggling mentally with something, with a deep depression or other things, you lay hands on your head and, and you speak in the name of Jesus what the Lord puts in your heart. He, he'll tell you what to say. You know, we, we're so uh, prone to think that we have to think of something. You don't know what to say, but God will sure tell you. And he'll fill your heart with such joy when you do those things that he puts in your heart to do. So I'm going to just speak a word here, but you speak. You speak to your body. If it's your shoulder or whatever it is, you speak to it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just speak wholeness. Speak wholeness. Be gone, pain. Be healed, be redeemed, be mended. We rebuke and cast out all demonic fear and all things that tell us what we're not, what a liar he is. We speak wholeness over ourselves and over our brothers and sisters in Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. I also want to uh, rejoice together with you. Uh, this last uh, week, the sermon was viewed by 174 people, uh, which I am thoroughly excited about. I believe those numbers are going to grow. I, I know what the Lord has spoken into my heart, uh, that this is the way that the Lord is going to minister in these last days, as long as they'll allow us to do it. So I want you to know that we don't intend to stop doing this even after we would return to our building, if that uh, should take place. And that if that does take place, we will just go right on ministering to you all over the place. Um, some of the uh, states that uh, I know people have listened to that teaching uh, is in uh, Florida, Georgia, Utah, Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, and uh, 104 in Wisconsin. So what a glorious thing that is. And the Lord's just going to continue to increase that everywhere. You know, you can preach to the world from this little place here. There's nothing hindering us. And there's nothing hindering us. We work together in Jesus' name. So Lord, I thank you for that. And I want to encourage you, what an easy way to evangelize. Uh, tell a friend, say, hey, listen, I listened to this guy. Uh, he's up in Wisconsin. Uh, I enjoyed what he had to say. Uh, why don't you take a look at it and give them the, the address for it and then tell them to give you a call when they're done watching it just to see what they have to say about it. 
And I'll tell you why, you'll do the work of the evangelist as much as I'm doing the work of an evangelist. So my address to all of you is not that of a pastor. Yeah, most of you have pastors. And whatever you do, support them and love them during this time. And uh, give your finances there. For their, Your bills there are the same as our bills here. So uh, I don't want you to give something away that you need to be given at your local level. But um, I do want you to uh, realize that together we can evangelize in this simple fashion of telling people to listen to this. And may they give their heart to the Lord. Do you know that we had two people give their life to Jesus this last week? How about that, huh? How come we don't rejoice more about those kind of things? Yeah, and one of those guys wants to be baptized in water. So uh, that's an exciting thing. I want to, to uh, <clears throat> know that also that I, I believe in and I appreciate uh, the gifts of the Spirit when they operate. And uh, so I'm asking you, uh, if you have a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, uh, comfort, or any of the other graces that God has placed in the church, uh, anything prophetic, uh, I want you to feel free to send them to me. And if that works out in my spirit with the teaching, um, we'll use it as part of the teaching. We'll do this together. Won't that be exciting? Um, and I want you to send it to this particular address. Uh, lest I get inundated in everything else I do. So just put it into Pastor Mike Norton, one word, Pastor Mike Norton, N-O-R-T-O-N, at gmail.com. And um, we'll work together on this. I thank the Lord for that. That's going to be so exciting. I look forward to what the Lord has said. I want to start today with Isaiah. Oh, I need to say you one thing. If you want these notes... Uh, you can find these notes um, at www.foursquare. I'm sorry, www.crossroads foursquare, one word, crossroads foursquare.org. And there, there will be uh, the notes to the teachings. So uh, you can run those off. And um, if you're there in a small group of just your family or a couple friends or just yourself, you, they'll have the notes to follow along. Um, I even sometimes uh, use them myself. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Isaiah 42, verse 9 is where we're starting. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Let's look at the first part. Behold, the former things have come to pass. What former things? What is he referring to? The former things have come to pass. Unless you have it settled in your spirit that he has spoken many times in many ways in the past, and all of them have come to pass, then you will be not very built up in your spirit to believe that what he has said that's going to come is going to come. So let's look at some of the past. One, God told Adam, not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, lest he die. It's found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 and 17. And as we know the story, he and his wife, Eve, ate of the tree, and they died spiritually, and later physically. Everything God said came to pass. But here's the good news. Even after they sinned, the worst sin that's ever been known to man, you walked in the cool of the, of the garden with the Lord, you, 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 you spent time with him, and then you disobeyed him. You rejected what he had to say. You rebelled. And because of their rebellion, it's gone on throughout the whole earth. We all live under that same spirit of rebellion that's present in the world today, came from them. But the good news is this. Even after they did the worst sin imaginable, God came walking in the garden looking for them. You may be out there right now in a motel room with a sack of crack cocaine you believe the lie that God can't forgive you. You've done too many wrong things. 
That's a lie. God is always willing to walk with you. Always willing to walk with you. As long as the door of that ark is open, and that ark is Jesus, and he is the door, as long as that ark is open, God is calling you in. You say, well, Pastor Mike, I, I spent all night doing an immoral things. The door of the ark is still open to you. Run! Get in! The time is short. Don't you see the things going on around us, not only here in America, but all across the world with the locusts plaguing the Middle East and the North Africa, causing there to be a possible massive famine and unprecedented measures? Are you not aware of the earthquakes that are strong and mighty and Frequent? Are, are you not aware of those things? All over the world. This isn't the only disease that's come upon the world. We've just made more of it. It's not the deadliest. Probably won't end up being the deadliest. We pray for all those that are sick. We pray that God gives wisdom to all those that are in a position of authority that needs to advise. And we listen to their advice. That's the reason why all the chairs are empty behind me. I'm here proclaiming the gospel news, fulfilling those things that's required of us. But I want you to know that these are the last days. You say, well, Pastor Mike, I, I could never serve the Lord. I, I've been so messed up my whole life. God's the healer. He'll heal your mind. Why do you keep listening to the demonic voices? Why do you keep telling, letting them tell you what you're not? You know, when you are sitting there with that bag of stuff on your bed, God looks past that bag. He looks past the needle. He looks past the person that you had a relationship with last night. He looks past all of that and he looks into your spirit. And he knows what he created you to be. It's awesome. Let Jesus do the awesome thing in you. Don't keep believing that lie. Do you want to be like that lie? You want to continue your life in that lie? Or do you want to come alive in your spirit and then it'll regenerate everything? God is calling you. I'm going to pray with you right now. Lord, if there's any listening to me right now, which I think in my spirit there are, that, Lord, that you would just cause them to be transformed in the renewal of their mind, in the renewal of their spirit. That, Lord, they can't do it, but you can do it, and you are wanting to do it. You have a plan for their life. You see them what you created them to be, and they're awesome. And their future is unbelievably awesome. What they are right now is not what they were intended to be. So, Lord, let us change right now and Say, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Come into our life. Transform us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you have a pastor you're connected with, I want you to give them a call and let them know that you've accepted Christ as your Savior. And if they have any teachings to help you in your walk in Christ, do sign up for those. Get baptized in water. Do what God says in the Word to do. And then, if you would, tell me on uh, Pastor Mike Norton at gmail.com. Tell me I received Christ as my Savior. So I could just mention that we had another person find Christ their Savior, renewed their self to the Lord, and we could all rejoice together. Lord, we really rejoice for all that have come to know you as Savior, who are going to escape from the Lord. We know that the Bible clearly states that the one world government is coming. And it, in fact, it is already here in many, many ways, pressuring us. But Lord, we know that this world is going to get darker and they're going to say, peace, it's going to work out, stay with us, things are going to get better. But the Bible clearly states that that is not true. Lord, we just receive you and when you come, we're going. And if we're here during any of that terrible time, which many people have died for Christ already, around this world, Lord, we will stand fast in you. We have something to live for. So, Lord, I thank you and rejoice together with those that have received you. Hallelujah.
The Lord told Noah, I want you to build an ark. It'll save your family. Genesis chapter 6 and 8. He did, and his family was saved. And then he built an altar and to worship God. Let me tell you, folks, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. And him only worship. God told all the kings of Israel, of Judah, to serve him. And lest they be removed from the land. Do you know God actually told that to Moses before they ever even got in the land? You'll find that in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. God uh, spoke into uh, Moses' spirit, and Moses had walked with these people for all these years. He knew that they were constantly rebelling, and he warned them, you may go into the land, and God will give you that land. But if you continually rebel and become like the nations that he drove out of this land, he will drive you out just the same. And they were driven out. Jesus told the disciples of his death, resurrection, before it ever happened. He told them exactly what was going to happen. <clears throat> they had a hard time understanding it. In fact, at one point, Peter says, Lord, let it not be so. And Jesus rebuked him and said, get behind me, Satan. You don't understand these things of God. You only know the things of yourself. The disciples took Jesus and they looked at the beautiful temple in Jerusalem. And the Lord warned them and said, there won't be a single stone left on top of another. That was hard for them to believe. 43 years they built, they worked on building that temple. Jesus spoke to Paul about his return in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And Jesus announced it to all of us of his soon return in Revelation 22, 16 through 21. Jesus has told us many things of the past. Everything he ever spoke came to pass, just like he said they would. So let's look at the next half of that verse. But there are new things I declare, and before they spring forth, I tell you of them. What are these new things? We have been told by the Holy Spirit, via the graces, the gifts that are in the church, to comfort and to strengthen and to form us, that 2020 was going to be a year of hardship, a year of Great spiritual awakening. People coming to know Christ as their creator God. That means they get in touch with the plan he has for them. Their savior. Their lover. And their peace. God is doing that in the hearts of men. And you know right now, they're already across the world. There is a great turning to the Lord. In unprecedented ways. In countries that you wouldn't even think that that seems right. But God is not hindered by lines drawn in the sand and says, that's your country, this is our country. God is the God of all the earth. Satan is the prince of the power of the air, but God is still the God of all things, and his plan is what's going to come to pass. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? You know, I listened to pastors talking, and I was on the uh, Zoom uh, pastor conference for the six-state area uh, within our group. And it's amazing, uh, almost all of us, only maybe a couple, ever had done any of this kind of stuff before, where we were live streaming or uh, doing Zoom conversations. Um, but I'll tell you what. God stirring up people to do these very things. And I believe because of it, we're going to see the greatest revival we've ever seen. People are inviting people to listen to these things that would never come into this building. Be used of the Lord. Don't sit by and watch this, guys. 
This is going to be the greatest move, and it's happening right now. Get in. Get in. It's going to be the blast of your last. Passing of time. This is it. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the Lord. Don't run around in fear and wonder what you're going to do. Oh, for pity's sakes, God said that he would take care of you. And that, all, that fear is torment. And God says that he would keep you from all fear if you'd listen to him. We'll know what to do, where to do it, and how to do it. Just listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and step out. Step out on the waters. Peter had to get out of the boat. Some of you are going to have to get out of the boat. So I don't know. I don't know. Rebuke that fear. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. You're above that. You're a giant in Jesus' name. Take the authority God gave you. Take the power of the cross of Calvary through the scripture that God gave you and use it. And you'll be, full, you'll be texting me and telling me the great things God has done. And your whole church will be rejoicing at the miracles of God taking place in your area. God's going to do a wonderful thing. Get in. Get in. Now those verses that I just read to you in Isaiah are there, 43, 18, and 19, are talking about the the former, the latter kingdom that Jesus is going to be part of. It's called the kingdom of age of Christ, the reign of the Lord. And they were going to be so excited about what was happening and all that was going on. They didn't even want to remember the former things. I believe if you come into Christ and you join in and you get into the waters and you walk upon those waters in Jesus' name and you do the things that God has laid out before the world was created, he's already got the plan for your life. Get involved with that plan. And you'll have joy like you've never had it. And you'll see people come to know Christ as Savior. You'll be as shocked as anybody when a miracle transpires right at your fingertips. And we know it has nothing to do with us, but it does to do with the fact that God did it because we are his kids. And he doesn't mind letting people know that we are his kids. Lord, I thank you for that. Ezekiel twenty-two thirty 30 says, So I sought a man among them who would make a wall. Two things they were to do. Make a wall. Second, stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land, the area you're living in, that I should not destroy it. But I found that there was nobody. What is the wall that he's referring to? I believe in the New Testament that wall is the saints of Jesus Christ. The more people that you can lead to Christ and together team up and lead to Christ, and they just start to line up one after another until there's a wall of godly people, and together we stand firm in Jesus' name, and you save your city. I believe there's cities that are going to be destroyed, and there's going to be cities that are going to be maintained, and they'll prosper in the midst of all the other chaos. Why? Because there's those building blocks that God has put there, and they agreed to the Lord, they agreed to the word, and they proclaim his truth, and they pray for their area in Jesus' name. I rebuke the devourer of the area in which I am living. There are, our city is made up of three counties, and I pray for all three counties, and I throw in the Green Bay area because it's so close that, Lord, that there will no longer be a devourer coming into our valley, but it will be rebuked, and I rebuked it in Jesus' name. I resisted in Jesus' name. We don't have to have that here. So, Mike, don't you know what they're saying? Yeah, I know what they're saying, but I know what God says. And he tells the truth. Isaiah 33, 6 says, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. Not fear. Not gossip. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. And the strength of of salvation. Your salvation better be based on something. It better have wisdom and knowledge to it. If it's just, I had a, I'd have had a really a nice feeling, well, that ain't much to stand on. Uh, I'll tell you what, you need to have the basis. So get knowledge, get wisdom, get in teaching where there is quality teaching. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is his treasure. It's a treasure chest for us. We need to go to it. And open it. Lastly, Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Peter 5, 6, and 7, 1 Peter. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Embrace God's new thing. You'll find a joy. I'm always concerned about those who are always trying to find a way to protect themselves. I'm not against you protecting yourself, but if that's because you are fearful and you won't go tell other people of Jesus, lest they get to know something about you. Well, let me tell you something. A lot of people know something about you. Does Jesus know the somethings about you? Have you made him the reason for your life? For he is life. I want to encourage you this day. Pray for one another. Phone one another. Text one another. Zoom one another. All the other others there are out there. <clears throat> Love on one another via these various means. And let people know that you, that you care. And that Jesus cares. Let us see people come to know Christ like we've never seen. There's a lot of fearful people. And I'm going to tell you something. I think before this year is over, that fear is only going to increase. I know what I feel in my spirit. I'm not making a prophecy. I'm just telling you what I feel in my spirit. Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. Lord Jesus, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Do a quick work in our loved ones and our friends. Our sons and our daughters and our mothers and our fathers, our brothers and our sisters. Oh, Lord, do a quick work in their lives. Shake them up. Raise them up. And Lord, set them free from the things of this world and let them live for you. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen.